and welcome to Mason Bowling Center in Lemonster. We got a North Conference matchup tonight between the visiting Josh Daly and Stan Parker. Josh, as the road bowler, I believe will be going, will be, go, will be leading off. Daly was a mid-season replacement for Brian Fournier, who unfortunately had to bow out due to injury. His first official match in the league was a 12-2 victory against yours truly. I will spare people from the score. So Josh, oops, yep, yeah, he threw a 648, not too shabby. So Josh sits at 26 and 16. He is second in his division. Josh starts off, drops seven. And he goes to the side a little bit. And oh, and he covers it for the spear. Nice. All right, here we go. Josh starts out with a spare on lane 10. Josh fires. In the pocket, drops nine. So he leaves a two pin with a nice little guide off to the side. Got it, didn't even need the wood. So two in a row to start. I got a little, I'm, I'm keeping my own right here. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Just in case if you have any questions. I mean, it's a little, I'm sure it's a little, a little easier to keep it when it's only one bowler at a time. Yeah, keep trying, you can never count the marks. That you right. Big matchup tonight, though, Justin. Yes, big match. Josh fires again, only eight this time, leaving the two seven with a nice piece in the back that back that uh, is pretty favorable. Ooh, maybe not. Even with the wooden back, he hit the, hit the two pin a little too full. He really misses, misses the stick for a nine box, 46 through three. Yeah, when it's all said and done, Josh is going to be fighting with those of us that are at the top of the conference. Yeah. Stan and I at the moment are are, are uh, fighting at the top of the typing, fighting at the top of our division. John Winchell's up there too. He is. Yes, I see. He's on a nice little. He's uh, on a nice little run the last couple, his last couple times out. Josh shooting at the one, two, ten. Leaves the head pin. Oh, wait, the wood's coming back. And leaves the head pin. So the second time Josh has folded Mason. That is correct. His, uh, his first appearance, he says, was four years ago during the um, last season, his um, last appearance, of, oh, his last season in the uh, Youth Travel League. They have had, uh, they've had, Mason's has had its, a team or two in the league for the last handful of years. The league is currently on a COVID hiatus. Hoping to get back next season once things start to die down. Daly, Daly in the fifth, little fin. Uh, the seven pins, oh, the wood gets better and better. And goes back right up against the seven. Ooh, just hangs on to get it. So Josh will be, Josh at 65 on the ball. And now, one of the newer entrants to the league, Stan Parker. Out of Lemonster, this is his home house, as you might expect. Stan, as of December 21st, has a record of 56 and 28, and was the top overall seed at the time, though so that has changed. He's also, he and I are also are going, he and I are battling, as I previously mentioned, at the top of our division. And a little light with the 3, 5, 7, 10. I'm Justin Scally on, on the play-by-play -play tonight, in case you haven't figured that out yet. Bob Lee alongside. Thanks for broadcasting, Justin. You're very thanks, welcome. Thanks for putting the, putting the signals together. Yep. Stand off to the left, leaving three. Get 
gets an eight box. So, so gets an eight to start. I know Stan, he'll be marking in short order. And back in the pocket, leaves the eight and the nine with a piece of wood in, at an angle in front of the eight. Probably wants to go a little high on the wood, but avoid the cap. He goes oh. low and gets nothing. I don't think that's what he wanted to do. And Stan with a nine box. Stan started bowling around the time that I moved out this way. I started bowling here in 2012, and that's about the time he started, so going on about 10 years or so. He's come a long way in, the, in, in, a short ten, in short 10 years. And off to the left. He throws that one about 35 miles an hour. Yeah, he, he probably a little higher. Stan with the one, three, and the seven. I'd say it'll, I'd say at least 35. And ooh, leaves the nine pin in the back. Nine. Eight, eight to nine. And Stan with a, gets a 10. 27 through three. Yeah, when I first met Stan, it was bowling in a summer league here. He was only averaging like 104, 105 at the time. And now he's about 10 pins higher than that. And ooh, a little full on a weird hit. The one, two, and the eight. Yeah, I'd say Stan's at least 35 on the radar gun. I know the, the radar gun at Millis, as Stan fires a second ball, only gets three. The radar gun in Millis get, you know, has gotten me up at about 34, 35 miles an hour, and I'd say he throws at least that. Ooh, tough six. All right. Stan, Stan would like to get something here in the fifth to set himself up for the second half. in the pocket, these diamond on the left side, the two, four, five, and eight. Oh, just a little too thin. They cut the two in front of the four. And hoping to clean up here to minimize the damage. And he got it. So a, di a rather disappointing 43 half for Stan Parker. Josh Josh will now go over to lane nine and come back out. He's sitting at 65 and a ball. I'm gonna push this lead up a little bit. So we're in Lemonster, Massachusetts right now. Lem uh, Lemonster, Massachusetts. So we get some viewers from Canada and uh, what, what place for that we have to be. Uh, All right. All right. The older houses. Yeah, it's this house was built back in the back in the late 50s, I believe. It's daily drop seven. The five, nine, and ten piece of wood off to the left here. Looks like it's touching the five. Should help. And he puts out the nine. Munster is pretty close to the center of the state, Just about a 20-minute drive north of Worcester. Daly with a nine box. So Josh sits at 81 through six. So Josh looking to jump out to a big early lead. And he may need that as Stan is more than capable of stringing marks together. A little full. 
Got the 247 on the right, six on the, no, excuse me, on the left, six on the right. No wood to help. And just, just one, he plucked the four pin. A really small sample of those three and ones, but it's, it's coming in at about a 10%. About a 10 percenter, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, through the hole for a seven box. Sitting at 88 through 7. And those three and one those three and ones can vary in difficulty depending on where the one is. And back in the pocket is the daily ball we're looking for, and he gets them all. The nine pin falls late. It took eight boxes for him to throw a hammer like that. All right. Two boxes to go. Here in game one. Daly back in the pocket, a little thinner than the last one. Uh, he wants that piece of wood to roll back. It would have been lined up at the six, but alas, it goes into the left gutter. And a wide open six pin. And he's got it. So 118 in the ball here in the ninth. One box to go. Oh, another mark and good fill. He can get up on the 150 board. Through the middle, uh, up a spread eagle minus the seven. Sits at 123, and I may have jinxed him. No 150 coming this game. Oh, what a shot! Shoots the three into the two and goes fair, goes pretty quickly. The two pin the last to go. What a shot! Josh out making a statement early. 133 plus this. And the six pin is well, and it's not going to go with it. So with that six fill, Josh with a 139 to start. Stan's got a little work to do. Now this is a notoriously tough house to the point where the honor boards in here are for a 150 single of 400 triple and a 625 five game set. Stan is it? 139. Oh, we have confirmed the score. Stan off to the left, only taking out the 248. To the middle, plucks out three more. Try to get three off to the side there for the nine bucks. Oh, tough six. Oh, well, Stan sits at 49 through six. Needs 91 pins to take the string. He's gonna have to string a couple of strikes together at some point. We're having lane issues here. Well, jo Josh is uh, averaging 131 so far in the ACST through six. Yeah, not too shabby. Not too shabby. Six, six four, eight with a 129 average. Yep, that is correct. Set that up to 131 with that yep. box. Yeah, not too bad at all. Now I was doing, looking up some numbers on the uh, on the league secretary site leading into this. I mean, Stan sitting at a 117 league average. Without all the matches, all the, the matches updated in the system. So I should say that uh, 
Josh's conversion there was what was a spread eagle. That was a clipped eagle, right? Correct. It, correct. It was yeah. the it was the spread eagle minus the seven pin. Right. I, I have uh, observed now 340 spread eagles and only three, four, five have been made. So you're in. A, you're in a, it's beginning to border on two percent. And <laughs> that definitely, even even if the seven pin was up, that shot definitely still would have fallen. That, that was the, the clipped eagles. That was that, only the second one I've ever seen. Only the clipped. I've ever seen made well. So when so numbers. so with your with your with your numbers there, the clipped wing is with any with any pin missing. Yeah, and no wood. No wood. Right. No, no. It's only with the only with the tail wing. Missing. Oh, with one of the with one of with one of the corners. Seven or the ten. Yeah. Right. Correct. And the average score for pros on on the spread eagles is eight point three, including including the five or six pins. All right. So Stan trying to shake off that six box. He's got four boxes to go in this game. And he's off to the right again. Eight, uh, one, two, four, and eight on the left. The six, ten on the right. Oh, everything but the ten pin. What a, what a bid. And he cleans up for his 10. You know, that's one thing I was going to mention what before the delay was that with coming off a of stand six boxes is as as Powell, he's just as likely he's just as likely at times to to put one of those six boxes up there if he's just a little bit off. I almost wonder sometimes if with that power ball it can be a little can have a little bit of a difficulty with, with his pinning. But no six box this time. He's got the 4-7 with a nice piece right in front. Looks good. And he's, oh, the ball comes off the wall to take it. So 69 on the ball with two to go. Every mark here is crucial. Right back in the pocket. Got the baby split on the other side, the 310. This wood's a lot more favorable than the one that Josh had. As long as he doesn't hit that three pin too full, he should get it. Ooh! And the, yep, the, the pin jumped the wood and the ball went left. And he gets the 10. So. So stands back on his object pins more consistently the last three boxes, but doesn't, but doesn't have much to show for it yet. So one, one full 87 through nine. Ideally, he'd like to get another mock here and get it up over 100. Right, he's, he's got to play for total too. Uh, is, Justin, you have, yep, that is correct. You explain the scoring system to the viewers. All right, we'll take care of that shortly. So Stan drops six, the three, five, seven, ten, a little wood there. Could come into play. Oh, just missed. So Josh will get the two points. Here's Zephyr here in game one. And Stan checks out with a nine to end it at 96. So Stan's got a bit of a hole to climb out of after the first one. Josh takes the first one, 139 to 96. So for those that aren't aware, this is a, this league uses a 14 point system, two points per string and four for total pinfall. This was actually modeled after the, um, the uh, summer league out of the Wuben Bowl that Mike Michichi and Frank DeLuca are involved in, which originally started at the old, um, the old Ryan Family Amusements in Malden, which is in, um, which is, which is since, which is since closed. When they, the leagues that they run, that, that league is, is um, they do one string, for one string, one, one point per string, and two points for total. So, for one, so when, when they started this league, they just decided to double it. So. Get through the half points per time. That is correct. And, and it makes, and by making double, making total worth twice as much as the strings, it makes it much more important. So. 
Daly leaves the eight pin at, while shooting at the Kaliri right. Oh, off. It's the cap for a nine bucks. So, here with a quick nine to start. Back in the pocket. Leaves the nine pin with an excuse me, the five pin. A little angled piece of wood there off to the left a little bit. That should be covered. Looks good from here. And he's got it. Wood landed just close enough to the pin that it didn't make a difference where on the wood he hit it. Josh. Josh was sitting at 19 in the ball. Here are the early on in string two. Oh, off to the right. Only takes out three. Picks the triangle in the right corner. Seven goes. And for an eight. So Daly sits at 30 through three. Even par as you would say, Buck. I'll adjust the camera. Daly fires, Brooklyn side, drops eight. He's got the two five for the piece in between. And he's got it, never in doubt. So Daly sits at 40 in the ball with a, with a box to go. As far as last time, takes out six. The one, two, four, and nine. Ooh. And takes out just the back pin. I look to clean up here. Not the start he wanted. But gets the 10. So he's got a 56 half. That gives Stan a little bit of an opening here. will now begin his second string. Four horsemen right and the seven and eight. Got a piece of wood in the back. It's angled towards the two left pins, which should help him out. And leaves the one in the seven. Stands just a little bit off at the moment. And he, all right, and he starts with an eight. Mentioned, this is Stan's first season in the uh, Atlantic Candlepin Singles Tour. I think he got jealous of watching me bully, decided to join in on the fun. And right back in the pocket, leaves the 2 8. Is that it for Masons in the Pro Division? Uh, yeah, just us two. Then we have a, several semi pros too. Uh, there was just one, but he ended up only lasting a few weeks before having to be replaced. 
and he leaves the eight pin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was legal. It was legal. So, staying with a 10 box, 18 through 2. Yeah, there was a piece of wood between the two pins, and he, the ball hit. Yep. He hit the wood. Ball hit the wood first. And Stan, with his, with his trademark crusher ball. Leaves the A-pin, piece of wood will not come into play. And he's got it. First mark of the strength of Stan Parker, sits at 28 in the ball, here in the third. And right back in the pocket again. Ooh, even like a mini picket fence in the back there, the two, five, seven, and eight. So that's a six fill. Piece out in front. Looks like it could help if he hits it right. Oh! I don't think he wanted to play it there. Hits the cap onto the left. The wood goes off the wall and comes over and takes the other four for the spare. Thank you very much. I was going to say. Ideally, he'd want to go on the left side of the wood, just not that far left. And Stan takes advantage with a massive hammer to close out the half. Are you kidding me? I'd say Stan has found the range. So Stan is off to the early lead here in game two. He sits at 64 with two balls at the half. Had it all the way, right, Stan? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so Stan ends his first half with three marks in a row. An eight pin lead at the half plus whatever he fills when he comes back up. Josh Daly back up looking to straighten things out. So he jumps over to lane nine. Thin hit. Got some favorable wood though. You got the three, five, seven, nine, ten. The only question I have is the ten pin, depending on how everything snaps around. Yep. Good question. Yep. So that's all he leaves. And there we go. Rolls in the. As it rolls in the left gutter. And he misses for the nine box. Yeah, with the way that piece of wood was angled there on the right, there was just a question of, depending on how fully hit it, whether the wood would knock the pin around the 10 or not. It looks like it didn't even get there. Left. Ooh. Only takes out four. And a big cluster of six there in the middle. One, three, five, six, eight, and nine. I'd like to be a little, little on the fuller side here. Oh, and he, everything but the eight. All right. So we're gonna clean up here. Got a nice plank in front of the eight, and he's got it. Oh, maybe not. Spoke too soon. Why I'm back here and he's up there. That's one of those things where you can't see the can't see the angles as well when you're about 20 feet further back. All right, Josh here in the eighth, back in the pocket. Uh, got the five, seven, eight, and ten. A couple, piece, couple pieces of wood. I think he wants to be on the cap on this five pin. Oh and he's God. got it. Eight pin is the last to go. So 
So Daly sits at 84 in a ball with two to play. Oh, off to the left again. He's missed the head pin on it. He's missed the head pin on a bunch of his fills so far, it seems. So he leaves a clear right. Piece of wood on the six. Oh, just slides by the head pin. He almost stole it. So he'll shoot at the head pin for a 10. And he's got it. So Daly with 99 through nine. Ideally, if he gets one here, that will, if he gets a mark here with a good count, that will force Stan to fill his mark and get another one. Daly with a big ball. Oh. Most places you're going to get a better lead than that. But not here. That is the 6, 8, 9, and 10. Piece of wood off to the left. Shouldn't matter. And he shoots at it anyway. Yeah. And. Josh with an eight, a little disappointing, 107. He sits at 246 for two. So Stan jumps, gets back up on lane nine, including the fill. He only needs, he only needs 44 pins to win this string. So he's got a golden opportunity here to cut into the overall lead, oh, into Josh's overall lead. I know. Welcome to Masons. That's gotta be the weirdest stretch of race I've seen. Yep. Well, staying a little thin. Got the two seven and two seven and tens. Got a bit of a roadblock in front of the two. Wants to go up on that cap. Yep. Oh. Ball comes back and knocks a piece of wood into the two. So a nine fill on the strike. Nine on the box. Catch the wood in the gutter first. So stands at 82 through six. Only needs 26 pins in his last four boxes to take the string. Yep. As you see, Sam Parker with a current 117 average in this league. He's, uh, taking the transition very well. All right, off to the right. The one, two, four, and ten. And a piece of wood rolled, rolled out into the lip will not be a factor. And oh, everything but the ten. The head pin went around the ten. And he'll pick the ten for a ninety for a ninety-two through seven. So so Stan is well on his way to winning the second string. Just the question is how much he'll be able to cut into the overall deficit. He was down 43 after one. And Stan buries it. Seven pin, falls into the eight. Got a good break there. He's the four pin. The couple pieces of wood that uh, should not come into play on bit. And ooh, he just clips the four pin on the way by. So Stan sits at 102 in a ball with two to play. Only needs a three fill on this mic here to lock the string up. Gets a little more at 70, so he so Stan Parker will take string two. He shoots at the three, six, and the seven. And Stan misses wide left. And Stan will pick it up for the 10 box. So Stan Parker with 119 through nine. So at this point, he has cut 12 pins, 
12 pins off the lead. The overall lead in the match is currently 31 pins. Ooh. The 1-5. He chops out the half boards to left. Well, got four on the right, two on the left. Let's see what he can get here. And he gets two for a disappointing six, but Stan will take the second string, 125 to 107. So after two strings, it's Josh Daly sits at 246, Stan Parker at 221. Looks like Stan is uh, taking a restroom break. We'll be back. We'll uh, sit tight. We'll be back in a moment. Nope, I got some water right down there. I'm good. Stan just went to use the bathroom. Hmm. Okay, so you can explain to the viewers the season format, the 18 game schedule, the, okay. um, the divisions. Okay. You could probably do it better than I can. Okay. All right, well, not a bad idea. So, in both the pro and semi pro divisions, we have the uh, league is set up NFL style. So, we have 32 bowlers in each league. Each conference is um, divided up. So each conference is divided up into four divisions of four. So you have an 18 match schedule over the course of the season where you only bowl everyone. You will bowl everybody in, only in your conference. You don't, you know, the only person that you will bowl in the other conference is if you make it to the championship match. You bowl everybody in your own division twice. You bowl a home and home, you bowl you bowl your division, your division opponents to start the season off, and then you bowl every other division in your conference one time through, and then you bowl it, and then you go back into your own division to finish out the season. Josh Taylor gets back up to start string three. In case you're just joining us, Justin Scalley alongside Bob Lee. We are at Mason Bowling Center in Lemonster, Massachusetts. Josh and Stan have split the first two strings. Josh leading the overall match 246 to 221. And Daly with the lemon drop takes out just the four pin. <laughs> he coined the term. Uh, I think. Oh, I think. Um, I, yeah, I think that one belongs to Tony Iannuzzi. I believe he coined it. In this house, as a, in this house as a matter of fact. All right, Josh recovers nicely for the 10 box. When New Palace Lanes was still around for a few years, the, um, they ran a tournament, the two houses ran a tournament called the Twin City Challenge. And like three of the years it was singles, two years it was doubles, and one of those years, a bunch of those guys from out in the East Boston area came out here and bowled, and I guess whatever night, whatever night they bowled, they uh, bowled their qualifier. The uh, lemon drop term was born. No, I was not here in that night. In case you were wondering. Wait, I was like, what? What house was that? Wait, that was. Um, as Daly picks up the spare. Oh, for the Twin City Challenge. That was between. This house and the former uh, New Palace Lanes in Fitchburg. Of uh, King of the Palace fame, rest in peace. And unfortunately, uh, one of many uh, pandemic casualties. Uh, Daly with a funky full hit. Drops six, he leaves the two, six, seven, and ten. the wood but gets nothing. 
In fact, I know there were some discussions before the uh, before the pandemic began last year, there was talks of reviving the tournament. Unfortunately, that never came to pass. So Dale gets a sure two in the corner, and he will get an eight box. He's sitting at 34 through three. So Dale with two boxes to go. Off to the left, gets a, carries a few extra. Although, unfortunately, he has the 1-8. And up. As is, as is what happens most of the time with, with the 1-8 or the 1-9, you don't hit the head pin full enough to carry the back pin. And he will pluck it for the 10, though. So Daly sits at 44 through 4. He got a box to go. Bad, huh? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm announcing. He chimes in every now and then. Daly a little full. The two and two, the two, four, six, and ten. He's got a piece in front of the six, ten that could help. A, could help a little bit. Oh, goes outside. The two pieces, two pieces of wood, butt heads. He will clean up for the 10. So Josh sitting at 54 through 5. And Stan will get back up to start his third string. He got the bounce off the wall he wanted, but unfortunately, the two pins just happened to hit at the absolute worst possible time. He had one ball where he buried it and he left the six, eight, nine, ten. No wood. Yeah. Yeah. Stand well, back in the pocket a little thin. The two, five, and seven. Not sure about the angle of this wood. Well, the wood in the gutter kept kept it in play, but he didn't hit the object, so he still has two left. Shoot at the two and the five. Nope. Just gets the five for a nine box. So Josh has cooled off after his hot start. So now it's a matter of whether Dan can continue putting up some decent scores and take advantage. Dan goes through the middle again. Takes out the one five, but with the, again, but with the nine this time. Get some stats on this shot, Bob. Yeah. And he takes up as he takes out just the two four. More than I care to admit. <laughs> uh, looks like I've observed somewhere around seven to five of these. Two of them were made. Oh wow. Uh, disappointing seven box for Stan Parker. And that is the thirteenth seven box. Wow. Oh, I, oh, oh, what, on the Eagles with the sleeper oh, in the back? Eagles with the towel. Yeah. Yep. All right, so Stan sits at 16 through 2. Nine is the most common leap. So okay, the yeah. Rollers. Yep. I believe, I believe that. You know, t typically you're going to pick out three on one side and then three on the other. I've seen 13 of those 7s, I've seen 21 uh, nine. So, Stan only takes out the 2-4 on his first ball, but bounces back. Leaving the 5-8. Puts some wood in front. Around the 5 pin, he should get it. And there he goes. So Stan off to a slow start here in the third, only at 26 through 3. About a mark behind at the moment. Hopefully. Ideally, he gets one out of his next two boxes. Virtually tie the matchup. Oh, off to the right. He's hoping, hoping that, hoping that wood can come, 
come back closer to the head pin, but alas, that's not going to happen. Although, where it is set up, that may help keep things in play. Ooh. Which it did, but unable to convert, leaving the 2-4. Four pin does not want to go. As it looks like the piece of wood that was in back is kept the four pin up. So that is a nine box for 35 through four. I think that wooden, I think that wooden back kept it up. Yeah. Right. So it stands down nine through completed boxes. Oop, half whistle left. For a right-handed bowler, I'd say that's the spot, that is the version of the half whistle to shoot at. Oh. And he only takes out the one of the nine. I can't tell you how many times, how many times that I have done that in the past year. And that's disappointing seven. Stan sits it out. 42 half, only one pin shy of his first of um, his half from his first game. So he's got he's gonna have some work to do. As Josh will get back up, we are halfway through the match. So Josh is with a 12 with a 12 12 pin lead so far here in game three. The overall match lead is up to back up to 37. Starts off the second half with an eight drop. Got the nine and the ten. Curious to see where he plays this one. I'd go with I'd go with the nine if that front piece wasn't there. And ooh, the ball almost came back. Oh, sounds like that's not where he intended to go. Oh, cleans up for the ten box. Only two pins left standing so far this string. Well, back in the pocket. Oop. And a more favorable lead this time. He's got the three, nine, and the ten. like the right half of that wood should be good. Uh oh. He's got it. He went. Looks like I'm thinking backwards today. All right, 74 in a ball. Back in the pocket, dropping seven. So we'll be at 81 through seven. Got the triangle in the corner, clips the six on the way by. But way too late. And he will clean up. So Josh at 91 through eight. pulling away stands Sam may have some work to but we'll see what Josh does his last these last two boxes another thin hit the five nine and ten we got an one one flat piece in front of the five nine and another angle piece out in front they see which end he picks and he goes right down on the five and he's got it. The back piece of wood was set up perfectly. So 101 plus the ball here in the ninth. So Stan's gonna have a bit of a hill to climb when he comes up. 
Daly off to the left again. But gets a few extra this time. He'll be an eight fill. He's at 109. So now 109 through nine. Either side of the head pin should take this. Ooh, a little full. A little too head on. And Daly cleans up, so he will end the third string at 119. So he is sitting at 365 through three. Like Stan needs 77. Yep, Stan. Yep, Stan needs 70, yep, 77 to tie. Excuse me. Yep, 77 to tie and 78 to take the string. But she's going to need at least three marks. Stan off to the left, taking out just the four and the seven. Somehow left a piece of wood on the deck. Everything but the three. Oh, just in a nine box with Stan Parker. So he's at 51 through six. Stan just about needs to run the table here. On the head pin. He's got the three and the ten. Oh, the piece of wood touches the three and seems to be angled as a perfectly perfectly placed guy. Oh, and the ball bounces and takes it. The ball hit the wood about a couple inches further left than you'd want there, but got the fortunate bounce. Let's see if he can take advantage. like a five fill. He's got the Kaleri right. So he's sitting at 66 through seven. So is outside and somehow the six pin stays up. A piece of wood in the back helped take out the eight, but it wasn't enough. And Stan cleans up for the 10 at 76 through eight. We are officially in double strike territory. He will need a double at some point in these next two boxes. But he must, but he, at the bare minimum, he must mark here in the ninth. And he's well on his way, drops nine. Nice piece out in front, pretty much needs to be right on the fourth pin. Anything on the right half of that wood will take it. And he's got it. So 86 in the ball here in the ninth. He does need a he is like, yep, he does need a double strike. Spare strike spare will not be enough. And oh another loud nine drop. He sits at 95 through nine. He cannot, no, he cannot win the string. So, yeah, yeah, best Stan can do right now is 115. And the, yeah, the wood was not in a friendly spot. Clips it on the way by for the 10, so we'll stand with a 105 for a three string total of 326. A very unstan Parker like. So, Josh Daly with a 365 to 326 lead in pinfall and 4 2 in points with two strings to go.
Josh starting off with a nine drop. Gets a more favorable piece of wood with his single. That one, that one will not be in the way. And he's got it. So did Josh say where that 123 average came from? I'm gonna assume it's from Academy. He's not, it's his league average, I asked him league average. Because, I, I don't know what he's, I don't know what he, off the top of my, I don't know what he's averaging in the uh, Exeter League and in the Friday Pro League, but I know because we both, I bowl in the, we both bowl in the Tuesday Speed League at Academy and he is around that 123 area, give or take. Oh, misses the head pin, but drops eight. The head pin gets tripped from behind. One run down and get that. Oh, I got a microphone on. Oh. So Daly will have the six and nine to shoot at. Bob Lee goes down to check the piece of wood. And it is good. You don't want me going down there re potentially wrecking your microphone. Yo, come on, Mike. <laughs> that is fair. And oh, look, guess he could have played it there after all. The old benefit of hindsight. So 28 through 2. Yeah, Academy's fallen a little better this year, but he's only one of three, I believe, three bowlers currently that are over 120 in our Tuesday league. I think we're the only three in, yeah, the, the only three in the house. It's him, Brian Fuller Jr., and Dave Godwin. And I think Brian Kroll is at 119 the last I looked, so he's pretty close himself. Oh, Daly drops seven, only gets one on the second ball. Try to clean up here. Not the greatest of wood. Yeah. Gets the 10 pin for a nine box, so 37 through three. back in the pocket and the 10 is the last to go for a strike. I believe that is only his, yep, that is only his second strike of the match. But as they say, Candlepin is not a strike game, it is a spares game. And he has quite a few spares. He's got 12 by my count. A little full there, leaves the Two, four, seven, six, and ten with a piece of wood basically behind where the three pin would be, which will, which uh, definitely will help. And he takes out the last two. So with a seven on the strike, Phil. Josh will look to clean up, and he gets the ten. So, yep. Josh sitting at a sixty-four half. He would have made that even without the wood, although that piece of wood basically increased the margin for error on the cut shot. Stand back up. A little full here. Uh, only takes out four. Three, six, ten on the right. Four, seven, eight on the left. Piece of wood in back. A uh, little full, but wood got on the extra. Got the big four. And as you can see, he lives right here in Lemonster. He will get an eight box to start off. Josh Daly is out, is, uh, is, uh, comes, all, comes to us from Danvers. Back in the pocket. He's a 7 8 with some wood. I 
if you can either go on the, the right cap on that front piece, like just graze it, or I be tempted with a piece in the back, I'd be tempted to go over by the seven pin and he's got it. I'm not sure that would have gone with if the back piece wasn't there, but it goes with it. Spare for Parker here in the second. And taking out just the one and the eight. And a little full in the second ball as well. He's got the Starlight Five in the right corner and the seven pin. Ooh, tough five bucks. So Stan sits at a disappointing 25 through three. Dan responds, bouncing back nicely with a nine drop. Got a piece of wood that's stops basically right in the middle of the deck and should not come into play. And he missed. And of course, he plays. He plays the wood. He play, He plays the piece of wood and gets the ten bucks. So Stan with thirty-five through four. All right, Stan dropping six here. Got the one, two, four, and eight. Very makeable. And he's got it. Hard to miss the back pin with the angle his ball comes in at. So Stan will sit down with a 45 half. With a with a uh, with a uh, ball to fill it on when he gets back up. I was gonna say that I'm looking at, at, at uh, corner pin sevens, tens, and the, and the other singles by pros. Yeah. I've seen 116 made, 74 missed singles. Um, on the corners. Is, I was just trying to do the math in my head on that. Yeah, the single, singles no wood. Yep. Like that. That's 116 out of 190. Okay. It's a little less than the usual 70%. Right. Oh, and Daly, Daly with the spread eagle. Yeah. I'd probably say that's that's probably closer to 60. That's probably closer to 60%. Yeah. Rough guess. I think the, I think the 10 pin is. Seven is, well, yeah. We have to do the math. Right. <laughs> so report, Josh report. will get the eight box. So he's sitting at seventy-two through six. And I'd be willing to bet that uh, that um, you've got your you've got mostly right mostly right-handed bowlers that you've tracked. Yeah, that's what I, that's my denominator. You get know, your Holbrooks and your Bob Kellys and uh, right, right, right. You know, but, but right, it, yeah. because they have the ten. Yeah, because for the right-handed bowler, the ten pin is going to be the tougher pin. Yeah, right. But for a lefty. Lefty, that's the one you want to shoot at. Did you guys hit the button? I think the rack went straight up. Evan's going to check it. I don't think it's, I don't think he's going to need it. All right, we are good. At least in this establishment, usually if the rack goes straight up, it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, he tries to wreck a rack with the. He will leave the four, seven, and ten. With a couple pieces there. He wants to be more on the left side. Okay, maybe not that far left. So, 
Still shooting at the four, seven, and 10. A little different angle there with the wood. Only gets one. Only gets one there for an eight box. So he will sit at 70 through, no, sorry, 80 through seven. Yep, 10 over, 10 over par. And Daly buries it, dropping nine. He's got the four pin. He got a piece, wood, one piece frozen on the four, one behind the four, and one out on the lip. Should be able to go right at it. And he's got it. That's a setup you dream about if you've got the You've got the four six or the you know four nine or the four ten. So Daly at ninety in a ball with two to go. Daly up. Got the four seven and ten again. So a seven fill. He'd want to shoot it, throw it right around the two pin spot. Nope. Goes over more close to the middle and leaves the four pin. And Josh with the nine. He's at 106 through nine. to the right, gets the back pin to carry. So he's shooting at the one, two, and the four. Yep. The shot a little, little easier to make. And gets the bounce off the wall. The four is the last to go. So Daly sits at 116 plus a ball. We're gonna, we're gonna, get, we're gonna get this thing up over 120. Daly drop off to the right again. It's the head pin to fall late, so a six fill for a 122. And a, and a uh, four string total of 487. So Stan sitting at 45 and a ball, he's gonna need 78 pins, including this fill ball to take the string. I see our colleague, uh, Paul Grant, had a, a double header of his own to broadcast tonight. He's uh, got a he has a couple of, couple, of, couple of semi-pro matches up at, uh, up at my other home establishment, Academy Lanes in Haverhill. You, know. I mean, you guys have been an amazing addition to the Spread Eagle team. I, I, I think I, and the, and the bowling community is really tuning in. We're... Yeah, the, uh, our staff is gradually improving. Yes. Uh, in increasing, excuse me. So Stan drops five. He's got a 50 half. Yep, off to the left again. Seven box. Stan did overcorrected and only plucked out one. So he's sitting at 57 through six. He needs 66 pins in his last four boxes. So he needs three marks with good fills. Now, do you know if Paul has been cleared to drive yet? Uh, January 2nd, I believe. All right. So, so, all right. So next week. In the meantime, if you want to have your match called, you have to carpool with him. <laughs> with three left to shoot at. And Stan cleans them all up for the 10. So 67 through seven, he pretty much needs to run the sheet here. And by run the sheet, I mean he pretty much needs to throw a mark in every box. Yeah, Paul's pretty much limited to anything like Haverhill and points north at this point. For the time being, at least. So 
goes Stan, hoping for that piece of wood to stay on the deck. If that rolls back, he's gonna, he uh, will be able to use it. But he's got the two, three, six, and ten. Oh, at this point in the me oh, at this point in the string, needing marks, that's what I would do. That what looks like it would, it may help. That's where he's going. Oh, Neo, a little too full. And Stan with an Stan with an iron box. He's at 76 through eight. And once again, we are in double strike territory. Actually, he's in the exact. He's got the exact same score through eight boxes that he had in the previous string. And he gets the all right, he gets the extra pin to carry. Not out of it yet, but this is a must make. He's got the 610. And he's got it. A little thin, but he gets a good bounce off the sidewall. So he's at 86 in the ball. He needs a double and seven in this last box. We are well overdue for a Stan Parker double strike. He needs one now. And he's not gonna get it. So he sits at 92 through nine. And that will give the string to Josh Daly once again. Oh, what a shot. Picked out the one, three, nine, so, excuse me, seven and ten. Ninety-six? Uh, no, one oh two. He was at ninety he was at ninety. Yep, yep. He was ninety two. Yeah, he yeah, was uh ninety ninety two through nine. And seven for a one oh nine. And Stan sits at 435 through 4. So Josh Daly with a commanding 52 pin lead, 487 to 435 as we head as we head to the final string. Josh with a 6-2 lead in points. Stan looking to uh, get a better fate than I did and and get more than two points. All right. Yeah, double check. Yep. Yep. Rob will go in. Uh... Yep. All right. Scores have been confirmed. So Josh will get back up here in the fifth. Again, if you're just joining us. Justin Scally here alongside Bob Lee for Spread, with Spread Eagle Productions from Mason Bowling Center in Lemonster, Mass. Josh Daly to start game five. And he starts it with a nine drop. Wants that wood to flatten out a little bit. Got the five pin. He needs to come, gonna have to come on the higher side there, up top. Oh, oh it was a roadblock. You need to get up on the right side of that wood to turn it in the high side, as we call it. And Josh will get it for the 10 bucks. Well, this allows me to uh, keep the score up on the screen. It's always been one of my dreams when I watch bowling to see the score while I'm watching. Yep. Yeah, that's the one thing that's that's the one thing that's missing with a with a regular live stream is you is unless you're Excuse me. I mean, unless you're keeping score yourself, you're not gonna you know, you're not gonna have the luxury of knowing what's going on. For the casual viewer, you know, being able to just you know, correct. Go off, do work at the dinner, go to the bathroom, come back, and then absolutely, absolutely, know absolutely. Deal with a three and one. Just got by. Got the three four left. Just the three for a nine. So 19 through two. So the 10 or 15% of the broadcast win the audio 
it doesn't work. You always have that in here. Yeah, that is true. All right, Josh. Yeah, right, right. Well, Josh drops eight, leaves the five nine. Should have no problem with this one. And he's got it. That's light enough on the front pin. Spare in the third. Josh sitting at 29 in the ball. Got two more to go here in the half. Off to the left. Get some extra carry with the head pin falling. So seven fill. For 36 through three. Clean look at the 3-6-10. And he misses it. But gets it for the 10. So Josh at 46 through four. Got one box to go. A slow start to this one. Stan's going to get any more points. He's got an opportunity right here. I think Josh is going to jump up the standings very quickly once he makes up his matches. That is correct. This is only his. It is well, the fourth match if you include this. If you include everything in the spot that he inherited, this is only the second one that he's actually bowled. Oh, gets a gets a great bounce and takes out the 410. That's one that if you're going to play the wood, you got to hope you get something like that, and he got it. My thoughts exactly. All right, so Josh sets at 56 in a ball at the half. Stan jumps back up to start his final string. And he's got the threes, no, the three, four, seven. A little pull on that three pin on the right-hand side. That should send it over. Nope, wrong side. Stan will get the 10. Stan in his last time out took with a 12-2 victory over Rich Lamone, 631 to 540. He's put on. Bruno DeFeo and I bowled our match at the same time as them at Sunnyside. And he just uh, felt it like, seemed like he couldn't miss those last four strings. Alright, Stan off to the left. Leaves the 1, 3, 8, 9, and 10. Piece of wood around the six that should help, but he does not hit it. And only gets the two for an eight box, so he stands at 18 through two. And strolling to the right, collecting his thoughts. Back in the pocket, but he's a not so favorable break. The six, seven, and nine. Let's see what he does. And he takes out the two. Not sure if that wood was in a in the greatest of spots to be able to be to, to be able of any use. Well, he gets the 10, 28 through 3. Two boxes to go here in the first half. Stan needing to get something going here. And it's a better, better break this time on a pocket hit. Leaving the 2-4. Well, that frozen wood, he pretty much needs to, probably wants to hit the, oh, he got it. 
I'd say you either hit the two pin, either hit the two pin on the face or do what he did. But the frozen wood like that, you more often than not, if you try to split the wood perfectly, the ball's going to jump around the back pin and not make it. Spare in the fourth. And drop a nine. Seeing 47 through four is he'll get a one pin lead through completed boxes. Oh, he missed it. That's a big, big miss. He gets it for the 10. So Stan does have a one pin lead for the moment. 57 56, but Josh does have a spare to fill. See, so make. He makes the turn for home with five boxes to go. Daly back in the pocket, gets the seven and eight to go. So drops eight for a 64 half. Oh, and he gets the bounce off the wall. Hit that a little too thin normally, but gets the friendly bounce. So Daly hits 74 on a ball here in the sixth. Back in the pocket, dropping nine, so he's at 83 now. 83 through six, angle piece off to the side. Should be able to go right at it. And he's got it, not taking any chance with the wood there. Three marks in a row. That would be $25 in bonus money on the new Candle Pins for Cancer show. Hey, if we get enough sponsors, maybe we can start giving out. Starting to start with a quarter. Yeah, right. Should we go up to 250 after a while? Daly buries it. Gets nine. Up oh, here comes another rolling piece of wood. Just misses the 10. 102 through seven with another nine drop. Goodbye. And he gets it for the 10, 112 through 8. Yeah, have you have you watched the first show yet? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Answer. Yes, Assume. that was a nice That's the show. Yes, that is correct. That was it. That was a nice Christmas present to the bowling community. Yes. Well, they've set a new standard for uh, broadcast quality. Yeah. Right. Very happy to see Brendan post that Saturday night. And Daly will uh, take out the spread eagle. I think we're going to live on the uh, live live production. That is correct. <laughs> Sunday Pro League as well. Yeah, that is correct. Spent a couple days on that. Yep. So Daly gets the eight. He's sit, sitting at 120 with a box to go. Next yeah, so one should be coming up right after New Year's. That is correct. Uh, a week from Sunday, January 9th, will be our next rendezvous up at Exeter Lanes. We have two match. We have uh, Mike, two date two dates next month. Mike McGinty against. I don't know. The, the, the number three. I have no. I'd have to look it up. Yeah, so check out the aforementioned camp. I believe camp. it's uh, Dave Godwin. Godwin does, Dave Godwin does not bowl in that league. No, no, in the, in the Candlepins for Cancer. Oh, I was talking the Sunday Pro League. Okay. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I was talking about bowls. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the next, I was saying the yeah. next, the next broadcast yes. is coming up right after January 1st. Uh, and, yes, the, yeah, then the, the goal, yeah, the goal, yeah, the goal was to get one up a week. Yeah, they haven't nailed down a tape date for the next for the next one yet. So Daly gets the 10 there. 
for a 130 and uh, ends up with a 617. 8 pins shy of getting up on the uh, honor board over there on the left. But for his first time here as an adult, he will certainly take it. Way right. So, Stan needs 74 pins in the back half to take the string. And that's not how he wants to start off. Shooting at the 3, 6, and 7. Stan with a 10 box, 67 through 6. Those that want to check out the Candlepins for Cancer show, just go out to the go to the uh, Alley Chat page on YouTube. And big thanks to Alfie Johnson for putting that together. And Stan once again, the 3, 6, and 7. to the right. Only takes out the six. He's got two left. Gets the nine. 76 through seven. Yep. Stan's going to need to run the sheet here. 55. He needs 55 pins. His last three boxes. Takes out the three, five, and the nine. No, excuse me, the three, six, and the nine. And leaves the back two. That cluster of six, you pretty much need to be need to be dead full on it. And he cleans it up nicely for the ten. Though ten box isn't going to do him any good at this point. So he's eighty-six to eight. Now he's in double strike territory. At the very least, he needs a mark here. And yes. yeah, another nine drop. Surprisingly, for as powerful ball as Stan throws, he only has one strike tonight. Got a clean look at it. Oh, gets the bounce off the wood. He knows it. So stands at 96 in a ball in the ninth. Needs so. All he can get is strikes at this point. And nope, and that will do it. So. So Josh is going to have another 12 to 2 win. Stan looking to clean things up. Nope. And you know, that will do it. Stan with a uh, Stan with a 111 to finish for a five string total of 546. So Josh Daly wins this match 640 excuse me 617 to 546. Yeah. Okay, no. Bob with the final update on the board as you, as you can see. So once again, Josh Daly with a 617 to 546 victory over over Stan Parker. For Spread Eagle Productions, along with Bob Lee, I'm Justin Scaly. We will see you next time. On the lanes. See you on the lanes, that's right.